Starring Annie Barge and Marshall Thompson. Created by Jess Oppenheimer. Brought to you by... Post, the cereals that start your day a little bit better. Start your day a little bit better. Start your day with a cereal from Post. Start your day a little bit better. Better start out with the most. With a little bit better cereal, fresh from Post. Mrs. Smith? Yes? I'm Nancy Morgan. Yes? You don't know me, but I know you. May I come in? Well, well yes, please do. I'm here about Harold Baxter. Uh, Harold Baxter? Please, Mrs. Smith, don't toy with me. You know perfectly well who he is. He's one of the box boys at Martin's Market. <laughs> He's tall, fairly broad-shouldered. Fairly dark hair. <laughs> fairly good-looking. And very simple-minded. Oh, <laughs> Well, I'm sure it's no surprise to you, Mrs. Smith, that Harold has gone ape on you. <laughs> He's done what? He's gone ape on you. What? It means he's crazy about you. <laughs> oh, well, now, what are you saying? Harold is just a boy. We learn in psychology, Mrs. Smith, that a man's age doesn't govern his emotions. <laughs> Four years I wasted on that big drip. Twelve to sixteen. The best years of my life. Well, he's all yours now. I give him to you. Well, I give him right back to you. Lucky <laughs> Donna. Oh, no, Nancy, listen. I, I'm sure now whatever you see, you, you're just imagining it. Please, Mrs. Smith, I'm being very detached and objective about this. <laughs> All Harold talks about is you. The way you wiggle when you walk, the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you wear your hair. And for over a month now, all we've gone to see are French movies. <laughs> Again? <laughs> really, Mrs. Smith. A wiggle like yours doesn't just happen. <laughs> well, I just came by to see Harold's mad passion. As far as I'm concerned, it's a big relief. I'm glad to get rid of the big boo. I'm happy it's over. I'm very happy. Nancy, with us. Then she said that he's going ape on me. <laughs> really, you have very strange expression in English. I don't know where that one started myself. And then she said that I could have him. And she ran out of the house crying how happy she was. <laughs> well, she's just making a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> a mountain out of a molehill. Now, what does that mean? It means making a big thing out of something unimportant. All young girls do that. She's probably built this whole thing up in her mind, and he doesn't even know you exist. Yeah, well, I don't know. Do I have a wiggle, Susie? <laughs> a wiggle? Well, she said Howard spoke of how I wiggle when I walk. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mrs. Smith. Oh, hello, Harold. Hi. Oh, hi, Miss Carpenter. I thought the market had discontinued delivery service. 
Oh, they have. This is my own idea. I was at the store when Mrs. Smith phoned her order in, and I thought she might need these in a hurry. No trouble at all bringing it by. It's very nice of you, Howard, but you really shouldn't. Oh, it's my pleasure. Anything you forgot? I'll be glad to run back for it. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I have everything, thank you. Well, any time you want something, just call me at the store. Uh, all right. Or even at home. <laughs> yes. Where would you like these? Oh, well, uh, oh, here on the counter. You go first. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, bye, Howard. Bye. Goodbye, Harold. Bye, Miss Carpenter. <laughs> well, what do you see now? I think those molehills have suddenly become the Alps. <laughs> Danny, you're gonna have to talk to that boy. Yes, Susie, yes. I will talk to him. I will speak to him and show him that Nancy's the right girl for him. He should not even be looking at an older woman. A young woman my age. <laughs> Come on, Susan. You knew I'd be home for lunch today. Yeah, I'm sorry, honey. I forgot. I'll fix it for you right now. Hi, Annie. Hi, George. George, when I walk, do I have a wiggle? Yeah. Really? Well, I wouldn't exactly call it a wiggle. A waddle would be more like it. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mrs. Smith. Oh, hello, Harold. Uh, uh, Mr. Martin said you asked me to bring these over. Yes, yes. Uh, come in, Harold. Uh, I, I, I want to talk to you, Harold. Uh, very seriously. Uh, sit down. Uh, now, uh, Harold, uh, you know I, I'm older than you. Uh, and I had uh, more experience than you. Oh, yes. Uh, now, uh, Harold, uh, as we go up, a uh, little infatuation come and go. Now, but, but true love only happens, if you're lucky, once in a lifetime. That's true. You're so wise. <laughs> now, Harold, Harold, wouldn't that be a shame to let a little infatuation ruin your chance of true love? I think you're trying to tell me something. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is that there is someone, uh, one person, who is right for you. And I happen to know that she likes you very much. She does? Yeah. You know what I mean? I I'm talking of... Don't worry. I know. D does she have brown hair and brown eyes? <laughs> yes. And she's just about your size? Yes. How much do you think she likes me? Very much. Very, very much? Very, very much. Would you say it was love? Oh, I'm sure of it. Gosh, why didn't you tell me before? Didn't you know? <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I guess I'm slow to catch on. Oh, once you realize it, isn't it a wonderful feeling? Oh, the most wonderful. <laughs> now that you know, there are some things you must put right. Oh, huh? <laughs> sure are. And I'm gonna do it right now. Good. Ah, uh, you're... Mr. Smith, anything I can do? Oh, well, I'm Nancy Morgan. I know how you must feel, so I won't disturb you. <laughs> I just felt Mrs. Smith should have the spoils. Beg your pardon, um, the um, uh, spoils? 
Well, you've heard the old saying, to the victor belong the spoils. <laughs> There's Harold's Letterman sweater. And a book of poems by Edgar Guest. And his class picture. And his high wire ring. And his gold basketball. And his Dean Malay sweetheart pin. Nancy, um, Harold did come by and see me today. And I'll admit it doesn't look very bright, but... I don't think we should give up hope. Oh, don't bury your head in the sand, Mr. Smith. Let's face it. We've been cut from the squad. Let's sit down. Let's sit down. <clears throat> Let's see if we can't figure this all out, huh? Now, uh, what is it that appeals to Harold so much? Well, you're about the same size as Angel. You're cute. You know, I'll bet if you fixed your hair like hers, you're why should... You're approaching this rationally. Psychologically, you're a completely integrated, well-adjusted person. I wish I had your emotional stability. Right now, I just feel awful. Adolescent rejection is the worst kind. I may sublimate my feelings now, but I'll probably wind up a hopeless neurotic. No, no. I can assure you, uh, speaking as a completely integrated, well-adjusted personality, that is, it, it really isn't worth all those tears. Now, come on. Yeah. There, now, that's better. Oh, how can I face my friends? How can I face anybody? I'll be an object of scorn and pity. A forsaken woman without a date to the junior prom. <laughs> I'm sure you'll always be more the object of envy than any pity. Why do you say that, Mr. Smith? Well, you're a young, attractive girl. Am I? Well, of course you are. Oh! <laughs> you won't have any trouble getting a date. Well, I can't go if I'm not asked. Not to be seen at the junior prom is social Siberia. Who will be asked? By whom? Well, anybody in his right mind. Oh, sure. Who'd ask me? <laughs> I'm sure as soon as the boys find out that you're available, they'll fall all over themselves asking you. Would you? Well, certainly. <laughs> you don't really mean that. You're just saying. I certainly do mean it. Gosh, losing Harold may be the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> That's the spirit, Nancy. Why, I'll bet this will open up whole new vistas of experience for you. I'll say. Oh, I, I guess I better be going. Oh, gosh. You're so... Justin. <laughs> Bye, Johnny. Uh, Nancy, uh, if. The world's richest coffee is now an instant coffee. New instant Uban. Richest because, like famous ground Uban, it's blended with rare aged coffee beans. See the difference. The aged beans Uban adds to its blend are mellowed month after month to a bronze richness before roasting. Most coffee beans are roasted still green. Good, but can't compare in richness. Blended with coffee beans that are aged, just as vintage wine, the choicest cheese, the finest steak are aged. New instant Uban with aged coffee beans added to its blend. World's richest coffee. Uban, pennies more in price, the premium coffee of General Foods. Enjoy it soon. Deep, dark, delicious Uban. I have something to ask you, young lady. Well, I have something to ask you, too. Now, I just met Nancy Morgan on the sidewalk. And she was very sorry for me and patted me on the shoulder. And what did you say to her? Nothing. 
Well, you must have said something. She told me that you are taking her to the junior prom Friday night. What? Didn't you ask her? <laughs> of course not. Oh, well, I mean, we, we did discuss the dance, but that's all. Oh, I was just trying to cheer up the poor kid. <laughs> She was worried about getting a date, and I said, anybody in his right mind would be happy to take her. And she said, would you? And I said, it... Oh, boy. <laughs> well, looks like I'll be going to the junior prom after all. Get three tickets, because I am going to. <laughs> well, how can you? You have a date Friday night. I have no date. Well, that's strange. Harold came by to see me at the office today, and he's under the impression that he's driving you to Reno Friday night. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why would he drive me to Reno? Oh, I don't know. Why would I want to go to Reno? I don't know. What is it, Reno? <laughs> well, Reno is the place people go to get divorces. Oh, no. <laughs> he told me that you two were madly in love and demanded that I give you your freedom. Just what did you tell him? I, I just said that he would be very happy with Nancy. Yeah, but are you sure it came out that way? Yes, of course. I told him that I knew someone that liked him very much and they could be very happy together. I even asked me if that girl had brown hair and brown eyes and... Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> Guess I'll only need two tickets to the junior prom. Well, now, what will we do? Well, that's a very good question. Hi. Oh, hi, George. Come on in. Hi, George. Uh, George, is Susie home? Yeah, I think so. She sometimes drops in there between sales. <laughs> well, I have to speak to her. I need a good, sneaky idea. <laughs> I understand Annie finally got rid of the campus Casanova. No, no, not quite. He's driving her to Reno Friday night. <laughs> Reno? Without you? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I'll be at the junior prom. <laughs> the junior prom? Yeah, with Harold's ex-girlfriend. Somehow or another, I asked her to be my date. Or, or at least she thinks I did. Well, you've got quite a weekend coming up. Annie's off to Reno, and you're going to a high school band. Kids are always on the go, aren't you? George, how do we get into these things? Don't ask me, but I want you to know it's a thrill just living near you. <laughs> Every morning, I leap out of bed, eagerly wondering what gay adventure we'll share today. Right now, how about sharing a drink? I think I could use one. Yeah, that's a good idea. George, would you see who that is? Oh, yeah, sure. Yes? I just want to see what you look like. You stay away from her, you dirty old man. <laughs> who was it, George? She didn't say. Don't you get it? Well, I got the last one. Now it's your turn. For Pete's sake. What's such a big deal about answering the door, huh? You'll find out. Collecting for the newspaper, Mr. Smith. Oh, I do too. Now, you keep the change. Thank you. You bet. Couldn't have done that, huh? I wasn't sure who it was. What difference does it make? Who did you think it was going to be? The boogeyman? I'll get it. I'll get it. Yes, sir? Keep away from my daughter, Smith. George? George? George, what happened? I don't know. But I'd sure hate to be the butler around here.
For everyone who shines his own shoes, or ought to, there's a completely new way to do it. A new way that really makes sense. From Johnson's Wax comes the newest, cleanest, brightest way for everyone to shine shoes. For the ladies, Johnson's self-shining polish in this spill-proof, splash-proof container apply. You get a shine that only Johnson's Wax knows how to put on shoes. Or, if you like a paste wax shine, Johnson's self-contained shoe shine kit. Inside is the paste polish, a sponge dauber that keeps fingers clean, even the special buffing cloth. And just for children's shoes, Johnson's scuffed shoe polish in an unbreakable, no-drip, no-spill container applier that's child's play to use. News for everyone with shoes. A completely different way to shine them. That's newest, cleanest, brightest. From Johnson's Wax, one, two, three, Johnson's Shoe Polish. Well, let's face it now, there's only one thing we can do. Yes, there is only one thing we can do. What? <laughs> well, we'll just have to tell those kids the truth. Let them down as gently as possible, right? Right, Jack. Right, absolutely. <clears throat> you call Harold and then I'll call Nancy. Uh, I know, no, Jenny. You call Nancy and then I call Harold. Why don't we just write him a letter, huh? Uh, Johnny, we have a responsibility and we must face it. You're right. You're right. You call Harold. You call me. Hello? Oh, Harold. Yes, how are you? Well, uh, just a moment. I'll see if she's here. No, 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 no. I'm not here. You, you don't know where I am. I'm here. Yeah, she's here, Harold. <laughs> Just a moment. Hello. Oh, oh, hello, Harold. Well, I I'm glad you called, Harold, uh, because um, I, I have something to say to you, and I, I would like you to know that well, let me finish first, Harold. <laughs> oh, well, all right. You say you something first. Oh? No? He cannot marry me. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure you have a good reason, Harold. Oh, I if you marry me, your father will never let you use... The car again? <laughs> I cannot think of a better reason than that, Harold. <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't hate you. Yes, I will still shop at Martha's. I always want to be friend too, Harold. No, no, I won't do anything foolish, Harold. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, I have just been tilted. No, not tilted. Jilted. <laughs> Whatever. All right, Jenny, now I have called Harold, you call Nancy. But you didn't call him, he called you. Oh, Jenny, no matter who calls what, you still have to call her. Yeah. I suppose so. Oh, um, I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> Nancy. Hello, Mr. Smith. It's, uh, it's, uh, Nancy. Well, come in, come in, Nancy. Uh, yes, uh, yes, come in, Nancy. Mrs. Smith, I'm terribly sorry about that emotional outburst yesterday. That's all right, Nancy. It happens to all of us. And I'm very sorry about my parents' irrational behavior. Especially my father's. Oh, well, uh, there was no harm done, Nancy. No harm done? Why, he hit you. He could have broken your jaw. Well, as a matter of fact, Nancy, I didn't feel a thing. I won't tell him. It would be a terrible blow to his ego. <laughs> oh, Nancy. I noticed you, you cut your hair. Well, I, I thought I'd try something a little different with it, you know. A lot of the girls are wearing it this way now. <laughs> oh! 
You are, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that, that perfume you have on, it's, it's French, isn't it? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, yes, it, it is bonjour. I wear it all the time. Really? <laughs> well, I had no idea. <laughs> Well, um, Nancy, uh, <coughs> about this Friday night... Oh, Mr. Smith, that's the main reason I came over here today, to tell you that I won't be able to go with you Friday night. <laughs> oh, uh, you mean we're not going to the prom? Well, you see, yesterday I'd been rejected, and I was feeling insecure, and you became, well, a father image to me. And then, of course, in return, the attentions of a young girl gratified your own deflated ego. Remember, you've entered your dangerous years. Oh, yes, yes, I, I can believe that. Uh, Nancy, you won't be going to the junior prom at all, Nancy? Oh, yes, I'm going. With Harold. Harold? Harold? I stopped by the market a little while ago and, well, we, we chatted briefly. And then as I was walking out, Harold came dashing after me and begged me to go with him. <laughs> you can't imagine what made him change his mind. <laughs> well, I suppose I had better be getting on home now. <laughs> I do hope there are no hard feelings. Oh, no, Nancy. Uh, nothing that time won't mend. <laughs> oh, Johnny. Ah, honey. Do you suppose a... Um, tilted woman would consider going out to dinner with a man in his uh, dangerous years. <laughs> I think she would love it. <laughs> Good morning. Here's your ice bag. Goodbye. Well, wait a minute, George. Wait a minute. You're just in time for breakfast. No, thanks. I won't stay in this house. It's too dangerous. <laughs> oh. Post toasties. Yeah, the cornflakes crackling with fresh corn flavor. I get you another bone. Well, I... Oh, think, George, think. Post toasties are the cornflakes that are quick toasted to capture that real fresh corn flavor. Why, they're so crisp they crackle right to the bottom of a bowl. It's very tempting, but my throbbing jaw tells me to get out of here. <laughs> oh, good. I see, Josh, you have decided to stay for breakfast. <laughs> Brought to you by Post, the cereals that start your day a little bit better. Start your day a little bit better with a little bit better cereal, fresh from Post. Hennessy, starring Jackie Cooper, Monday nights over most of these same stations.